Hi, Brent Haynes with Wood Sound Flutes. I have five flutes I'd like to share with you this afternoon. The first flute in my hands is a low F flute made out of uh, red moral and corrugata burl. This gorgeous flute has our new eagle, flute, uh, eagle totem on it. We've redesigned our eagle totem. I'm really, really excited about it. We've, uh, we've redesigned everything about it, the, the beak, the, uh, the feathers on the back, the, 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 all the lines in the, the shape of the, the, the totem itself. Everything about the eagle totem has been completely redesigned and, uh, and I'm just thrilled about it. It's, uh, it's something that has, uh, has been, I've really been wanting to do for a long time and, and I'm very, very pleased with the results that we've come up with. Um, I hope you like it. Um, take a look at it, and uh, if you got any comments, I'd love to hear them, and love your feedback on it. At any rate, uh, this uh, this particular flute, um, as I say, is made out of the uh, corrugata burl. Is this uh, kind of cream brown with these red streaks in it here? I've got a close up of this area here, up near the uh, the shoulders. It's just beautiful. These pinks and creams and browns together and the greens and really incredible the colors that can be in wood. It's just amazing isn't it? All the different colors that can grow in that wood over time and over the years. Just a little bit of time and a little bit of energy and a little bit of water and things and a little bit of sunlight and, and uh, lo and behold you get this incredible wood that, that, uh, that comes out. It's incredible stuff to me. It's just amazing. But well, the most amazing thing about it is the sound that it creates. And again, this is in the key of low F. I hope you enjoy it. Man, I love that flute. I love the sounds of this, these burls. They are really, really wonderful. The reason they sound so incredible is that they're so hard and they're so dense um, that they just produce this echoing quality. Uh, it's just unlike anything else. You know, you just can't get that sound out of cedar. You can't get it out of, out of softwoods. Um, yeah, wow, beautiful. So, the next flute I have to share with you is a, uh, is a piece of our, uh, our honey cocobolo. This was uh, a really interesting flute uh, for me. This, uh, this is our first flute out of the honey, co uh, the honey cocobolo. This was a log of cocobolo that I bought. I was really excited about it until I cut it and it was uh, the hole in the log, which I knew was there to begin with had taken a huge U-turn in the middle of what I had expected to be solid wood and not only solid wood but um, you know 
grade 5A museum quality um, wood, you know, the best possible cocobolo you could have possibly expected, had a huge hole in the middle of this where I expected the best wood to be. And <laughs> wow, my heart sank to the bottom of my stomach. And uh, anyways, the rest of the wood in the, in the log is amazing. It is fantastic wood, as you can see from the flute in my hands. It is fabulous. And it is um, grade 5A uh, museum quality wood. But I didn't get the whole log out of it. I, uh, I ended up getting not quite the yield I wanted, but we got some really amazing flute uh, wood out of this log. And uh, the cool thing about it is it all kind of has this, uh, this whole honeybee thing about it. So this hole going through this log had honeybees growing in it. When I cut it open, the whole thing smelled like honey, filled the whole shop up, you know, with the smell of honey. And uh, you could see the honeycomb in the, in the area where the, the hole was. And uh, it's just amazing. I saw a swarm of honeybees one time down at the Zion Flute Festival. And I don't know how many thousands of bees was in that honey swarm or in that, that bee swarm, but it, uh, you know, it just really fills my mind with all sorts of questions. Like if I could speak bee talk, could the swarm talk to me as a colony? You know, is there, you know, does the colony have an intelligence as a colony? You know, all sorts of weird philosophical questions like that. But anyways, so honey cocobolo in the key of mid G and uh, who knows, perhaps we can hear the bees talking out of it. Honeybee Cocobolo. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? You know, the, uh, the swirls in this Cocobolo are just outrageous. Really, really beautiful. So, oh, it smells beautiful. The next flute we'll share with you is also in the key of mid G. This is Lignum Vita. And uh, Lignum Vita is... Uh, uh, Tree of Life is a translation of that, and it is a, a really powerful wood. This, uh, this wood is used um, for medicinal purposes. It's also used for, um, for a lot of really interesting uses. They use it for, uh, for bearings in, in ocean-going vessels. They, they actually use the tree... Uh, or the wood itself has so much oil in it that they use, they'll carve the, the wood into a bearing. And, and so when you have the prop spinning uh, underwater, they'll, they'll, they'll take and, and clamp the, the uh, propeller uh, shaft with the wood and it will self-lubricate. The wood will lubricate the shaft because it has so much oil in it. And, uh, and it will be a, they'll use it as a bearing. Um, 
you know, so it's really an amazing wood. It's very dense, and it has a very beautiful, dark, um, wonderful, rich sound. This is in the key of mid G. We also made a, a high C that you can see up on my website. Um, this wood is moving still. I was just noticing as I picked this flute up, the, uh, the high C is quite a bend to it right now, and it's still moving. This one has taken just a little bit of a bend to it. I just noticed as I picked it up, it's got just a little bit of an arch you can see to it. The high C has got a lot of an arch to it. Um, I really love it when a flute takes a bend. It, uh, I think it makes them sound better, um, but uh, it's really beautiful. The Japanese will put a bend in the flute on purpose. They, uh, they'll bend their shakuhachis um, on purpose to, uh, to make them sound better. And uh, so I really like them that way. But anyways, lignum vita. This again is in the key of G. Another thing that's interesting about this wood is it'll change color. This will actually um, go blue. It, the wood will go blue and, and things that it is ages. So this flute will change colors and things as it ages. It's quite a, it's a very, very interesting wood, lignum vita is. It is really powerful. I mean, that is that is a very very powerful flute. So, um, wow, very very powerful, very clean, very very strong flute. I'm going to be making a bass G out of that. I was thinking about it. I've been kind of thinking about it, making a bass G out of uh, this lignum vita because I I got some of this wood in, um, you know, to make some flutes out of, um, just because I wanted to been. You know, I've been wanting to kind of play with this stuff, and uh, but I just after playing that just now, I've, I'm definitely making a bass G out of that uh, lignum vita. So we shall be seeing a bass G soon out of lignum vita. So if you're looking for a, a, a G flute, a mid G that is really fabulous, either one of those flutes will be really a fabulous instrument for you. Um, the uh, coca bolo is a little bit brighter. Uh, the Lignum Vita, I think, is a little darker sound. Both are very strong. Both are very powerful. They have a lot of projection to them. Um, they're, uh, they're both very, very beautiful, very strong, very powerful flutes. The next flute I'll share with you is a mid-A flute. It is uh, made out of um, salmon gum burl. Salmon gum is also an Australian wood. It's uh, it's a beautiful wood in that it has a lot of movement in it and it has this three-dimensional effect. Some woods have a chatoyance to them. Chatoyance means that it glistens back at you. It has a, a kind of a glitter, but it, it, it's more of a depth. It has a, a depth to it, like a fiddleback. Um, you know, um, fiddleback is uh, that three-dimensional look that you see on the back of backs of uh, violins um, that, that looks like you can see down into it and it looks like ripples or ribbons. Anyways, uh, so when you move this flute, you can actually see it looks like it's moving um, deep in the wood and, uh, and it's just really, really beautiful. 
you can see this somewhat in the pictures. It's a lot easier to see with two eyes than it is to see with one. Like you see, you know, when you're looking with a, a camera, you're really only seeing with one eye because you only have one lens on the camera working. So, uh, so you only have the one eye of the camera working for you, even though you're seeing it with two eyes on the computer screen. But uh, at any rate, uh, so. Uh, this uh, this flute is just really lovely. I wanted to share it with you. I've had it on the website for a, a few weeks now, but uh, hadn't really had a chance to showcase it because I've been traveling quite a bit. And I really wanted to showcase it for you just because it's such an incredible flute. It, it just is really, um, just a really powerful, strong flute. And I wanted just to you have an opportunity to really hear what a beautiful, clean, clear, uh, lovely instrument this is. So, beautiful, lovely instrument. Um, you're looking for a strong, strong A. That is a great, great flute to choose from. I said I was going to shoot five flutes today, but unfortunately, there really isn't time to shoot five flutes on the uh, on the 20 minute limit that uh, Facebook has. So, so we're just going to shoot four flutes today. Uh, the fifth flute I was going to shoot was a Utah Juniper in high C. It's up on the website. You're welcome to go take a look at it. And, uh, and you're, you can hear the, uh, the flute there on the website at woodsounds.com. You can always reach me at www.woodsounds.com or brent at woodsounds.com. Of course, my cell phone, 801-822-1415. This next week... You can, uh, I'm going to be flying across the country to go hunt down some rosewood burl to make flutes from for you. Uh, we're going to be recording this on uh, my iPhone. It'll just be me flying across the country. So I'll be using the iPhone in the old self video mode and uh, taking some shots and talking to you a little bit about the uh, journeys as we're hunting down this wood to, uh, to make some flutes from. And uh, hopefully we'll find some big burls that we're able to, uh, to get some flutes out of. And so I'm really excited about it. it uh, it's something that's uh, going to cost a little bit to uh, go hunt down this wood for you. Uh, but, you know, you just got to have the right materials to make the best flutes from. And, uh, and I got to have the right materials. And so I got to go hunt down the wood. There's just no two ways about it. So off we go, cross the country <laughs> on a wood hunt, and uh, here we go. Anyways, I'll talk to you in a few days when we get back, and y'all have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you soon.